What kind of gun is that? Uh, that's the AR-15. Cool. And what does uh, the AR stand for? Uh, assault rifle. Assault rifle. Uh, do you know it's actually, it stands for Armalite? I didn't realize that. Yeah, Armalite. Thank you. Yeah. There's actually there's some gun owners who have them and don't even know what they stand for, too, right? Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so I guess, uh, what is your position then on guns? Do you think that guns should be removed from everyone? Uh, you know, they, they should be confiscated from every civilian? Or? Right. Do you want the long answer or the short answer? Short, short answer first, and if you go into long answer. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, short answer um, guns should be illegal. Anywhere there's children, guns should be illegal. If we're going to have guns, have regulations, not remove them like some people do. Mentally insane people couldn't get guns as easily as they could before February 2017 when your president, our president, uh, you know, removed the regulations on, on the mentally insane from purchasing guns. So, my stance is no guns. No guns. But, this is a capitalist society, and capitalism makes the world go around. Yeah. So, if you gotta have guns, and it is our Second Amendment right, we just need to modify it a little bit, so that kids are not getting killed. So that these kids are not dying for capitalism. You think, um, in terms of, uh, no guns, though, right? The, the school zone area was a gun-free zone, right? Um, don't you think, though, maybe gun-free zones are not a solution? You, know, you find a... Uh, I guess not. Right, yeah. I mean, you have, like, the, the nightclub in Florida. That was a gun-free zone, and the yeah. guy came in. No one was able to defend themselves against mentally deranged people, right? The Aurora movie shooting, right? The guy chose, out of all the movie theaters, a lot of them had, you can bring your guns here. The one that didn't, that's the one he chose, right? Right. So instead of... You know, instead of spending money on guns and keeping the NRA in business, maybe we need to spend more money on enforcement of of our gun-free zones. Yeah, I mean, if yeah, that I, makes any yeah, sense. Yeah, I would say, um, but the, I would say, like, maybe the last people we should look to to try and enforce some of these things would be the government, because apparently, like, the FBI had received many tips. Right, that right. you know of, of him maybe what they possibly say. doing this, right? That's what they say. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, it's it's government. We can't really think that they're the most efficient group organization to kind of have their best interests in our mind. Um, there's different, you know, different facets of the government. Um, I've always felt comfortable with with the FBI and the CIA. I mean, not in terms of surveillance. I don't feel comfortable, but in terms of trusting them to defend our country and, you know, avoid murder and bloodshed. Um, unfortunately, this regime I do not trust. And uh, up to this point, this regime has been the enemy of the people. Not, not a safe government for the people. Not at all. Including Obama's, right? I'm not including Obama's. Why, why is that? Well, I I'm referring to what's happened in the last year. In the last year? Okay. I know we've had plenty of mass shootings before that too, and especially plenty of under, problems with, with gun regulations. Obama, right? right. Uh, drone bombing uh, children overseas, two field hospitals, uh, you know, in Afghanistan. Um, you know, so it's not like uh, it's decreased. You even thought this would have ended by with Bush, you know, when he was out of office, but it only right. continued to increase. And it seems to be, you know, we'll see what the next seven years will bring if he will continue the same policies, right? No, seven years is unacceptable. <laughs> right, unacceptable. Uh, yeah. It's... What, what do you think of the idea then, you know, yesterday was President's Day, of having uh, no presidents? Do you really need a stranger dictating how you should live with your life and what you can and cannot do with your property and your body and with what you own? It's an excellent question. Yeah. Um, I'm, I've kind of become a bit of a hippie. Yeah. And... You know, if, if you wrote up legislation that was in the interest of the people of this country, I'd be interested in, in a approving or agreeing or voting for somebody that suggested we don't need presidents. That's a very interesting point, and I, I'd be open to hearing more about that. Cool, yeah. Uh, so, so the idea would be, generally, right, we don't generally need government at all, right? Because there's a lot of the things the government, we think that the only government can do, but you find that we can kind of do it ourselves in a much more efficient way, providing protection, providing, uh, like, especially when um, 
uh, Occupy Wall Street came in here. You saw all the food camps that came here. There's just a lot of ways that we can help each other socially instead of giving our money up to this bureaucracy, eats up 90% of it and gives away like 10 cents away, right? You're, you're preaching to the choir preaching right to the now. Choir. Yeah, 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 yeah. It sounds, yeah. sounds, I mean, it's a convincing argument. Um, it's an extreme, and I'm trying not yeah. to think any more extremely than just the removal of 45. Right. Oh, then the question then. Uh, and then, and then of the Republican Congress. Not they, all of them. Not all of them. There are honorable men. There are honorable men in Congress that take money from the NRA. I, I, have, I can't say anything bad about John McCain since this regime came into office. Uh, you but, know, he's got a lot of warmongering, uh, you know. That's his past, right. 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 Uh, I would say, um, NRA thing aside, you know, th there's no NRA member that's ever killed anyone. Um, I would say then, there's a lot of people who view Trump as, uh, as a fascist, right? I uh, agree with that. You agree with that? I agree with that. Well, then in your earlier statement, when you're making then that all guns should be removed from civilians. Don't you think that's the last thing we would want, that the only person who would have then AR-15 would be a fascist government like Trump? Uh, yeah, but right. But I'm not, I'm not, well, yes, that's yeah. a, you, you have a fair point, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting we don't let civilians carry guns. I'm suggesting we throw all of our guns into the ocean. Into the ocean. <laughs> no more guns. No more guns. You know, the people who first inhabited this land, yeah. Native Americans, they they defended themselves with bows and arrows. Um, you want to go back to medieval times? Those are honorable times, I would say. You know, we were living off of the land. They, they, I wasn't here. They were living off of the land. Yeah. And by by you know making money off of things and and developing capitalism, what do we have? We have. A 60 degree day in the end of February. This is scary. But we also have, you know, running toilets. We don't have to go chop down wood anymore, heaters. We can spend more time in pursuing the things we like, like protesting. Right. Uh, instead of worrying about, like, you know, like the Native Americans didn't particularly have much of any of these things, right? Uh, sewer system, right? It was mostly day to day grinding, hunting but, and gathering. I know, I know. But, but my point is that if you, if you live off the land and guard the planet, you don't need guns. I mean, right, yeah. this is, you know, 100 years later and, yeah. and every, if other countries have guns, so we're supposed to have guns we're too, I ourselves. understand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I mean, whatever, I'm, I, I need a solution, but if, if, if the government refuses- what, what do you think about maybe arming teachers? I think that's crazy. You think that's crazy? I think it's crazy. Is, for me, it does sound kind of crazy, especially the government teachers, right? Because like, if you have a student that's kind of rowdy, it's like, okay, you better sit down, right? But at the same time, it, they used to do that. There used to be incidents back then. People used to go to school regularly, like 20, 30 years ago, with guns in their trucks, seniors, juniors, going to school. It wasn't uh, an issue. There was never any mass shootings or anything like that going on. Uh, you find that like when gun-free zones started coming in, right, people find these viable targets to kind of let go. Yeah, I, I, I mean, more guns is not the answer. Any way you slice it, unless you're profiting from the business of guns, more guns is not the answer. Okay, so would you universalize that to say then, uh, government shouldn't have guns either. No one should have guns. Right? Uh, again, again, my my hippie Throw it position all into the ocean. is no guns. No guns. We do not need to kill. We do not need but to, to kill. defend ourselves. Don't we have nuclear missiles? In, in that case is a, that is a good deterrent in yeah. case of uh, you what know. about like home invasions you know I can't the thing is Supreme Court rulings have said many times over in Oregon Warren versus DC District of Columbia uh, Dick Shaney versus Winnebago County that there is no obligation to protect your life liberty or co property the cops have no obligation no duty you know so if there is no protection government can't protect you and the Supreme Court judges have said that it's like it's up to me then to kind of protect myself and I can't really use like a bow and arrow against a, a, a thug who will come in and break into my house or me and my family of course yeah. um, and if we have leaders that promote kindness and equality and that includes finance financially like a Bernie Sanders type who wants to you know take money from the one percent he is the one percent though don't you think he's got three houses mansions no you're you're good yeah. you're good you're good at this <laughs> um 
I mean, I, I, I believe Bernie Sanders' heart is in the right place. I'm not, I'm not gonna, y you know. Yeah, yeah. At the same time, politicians are often, uh, you know, rolling in money. Yeah, the crooks. And, and, right. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Look, why don't we just get rid of the idea of you need presidents or politicians? We right. don't need strangers dictating how to live our own lives. I don't. Need, the only person who can tell you how best to live your life is you. So, so then, back back to one of the points you were making is, so what do we do? How do we settle uh, conflict? Without a government. Yeah. I'm okay. into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, how, so how like, do we right, settle so, conflict? That's a good question. So, like, arbitration is not something that's unique to government, right? All it does do is, it's like, I will provide an impartial opinion to resolve this conflict. But the thing is, you can't say they're impartial when the cop works for the state, when the judge works for the state, when the, your defense prosecutor works for the state. Everybody works for the state. That's not really impartial, right? But you have, like, arbitration, like... If someone you know charges your account, your bank will pay that back immediately and investigate it, right? If there's a dispute on uh, eBay or PayPal uh, or any of these sort of uh, or Etsy, they will resolve the dispute. So like the market has created a lot of really cool ways to resolve this dispute. It doesn't involve throwing people into prisons for victimless crimes, right? Right. Right. Uh, so the way like they resolve dispute here, you have like over like 70 percent of the people in cages for victimless crimes. Oh, let's let's yeah. I mean it's yeah. You know th this here is is very uh, this is in my opinion a fascist state at this point. Yeah yeah. So I would say then let, they're just getting started. It's been it's been rolling for quite some time. Well okay yeah. right. I'm I'm uh, yes yeah. I agree. But um, Obama's wire, wireless uh, tapping program that they have here with the Patriot Act. You know it's it's been rolling. This. I need to uh, I need to do more research on Obama. Yeah. Obama Obama's America never made me feel like um, he wasn't trying to stand for well for for ethics and morals. I never felt like when Obama was now. Here's the other thing: he's not president anymore. We should, we have to stop talking about Obama. No one was really talking about Obama when he was president, though. There wasn't like all this protest against the war right. there, right? Now you see all the protests against Trump here, but where were all the protests when Obama? You know, people are talking about, like immigration policy and stuff like that. But, you know, Obama deported over two million people Did out of really? this country. Yeah, he ended the wet foot, dry foot policy of Cuban refugees coming to the United States. He ended that, uh, and they're sending they're sent back to Cuba. If they, you know, so like you know, th that's a death sentence. Somehow. Somehow, um, I feel like Obama taught love, at least in the public eye. Yeah, it's a show. Yeah, it's a show. And if you're teaching, Theater. if you're teaching hate and lies and fascism in the public eye, your public is going to come out of the woodwork. You know what I mean? I'm I'm a musician. Um, I like exercise and I like to play video games. And uh, and now I'm an activist, and I don't want to hear that that's a positive thing. I, I I'm here because somebody needs to be here. I'm here from New York. Oh wow, nice. Um, I drove down for President's Day just to try to spread the the message that we have to ab abort our capitalism and come down here and occupy the capital. <laughs> I like the Occupy the Capital. I don't know about the capitalism part. Capitalism has done really well for our, for a great lot of people. Cap, well, like the only thing privilege that we have is being here in the United States, where we're not as like poor as like I'm from Bolivia. You know, have family cool. there. Right? It's it's a very poor country, one of the poorest in the South America. Like a lot of people like to come here because your income drastically increases <laughs> the yeah. moment you're here in the United States. Um, and, and you no longer have to worry about if your kid is going to die. You have access to medicines. Um, you yeah. know. Of course. The, the, the inverse of that, when you see when, like, uh, you could say communism has been tried, has always been mass murders, right? Mild, greatly forward, millions dead. Parents eating their kids and children. Um, here we're such a great abundance of food, I would say, thanks to capitalism, right? I, I don't really see a lot of starving people. I mean, there's mental issues, people here. Sure, that's, yeah. Uh, well, you know, I mean, we, ha we do have a homeless problem in America, I think. Yeah, I, I would and say then if there's a homeless problem, then the last people we should turn to is government that, you know, seizes people's houses, forecloses, bankrupts them. Uh, look at the situation in Detroit. They do that all the way around. Because, hey, where's their taxes? You didn't pay your taxes? Well, time to leave. Creates more homeless situation. One of my favorite leaders um, that I've studied in the last year and tried to, tried to emulate uh, the philosophies of is, is Gandhi. 
and you know he believed that civil disobedience was um, a responsibility of the people when the leaders are become fascist. Um, oh my God, my point. Um, they did it peacefully. Right. The, yeah. So right, and a peaceful occupation. Thank you. Would we could over? I mean. But then, what uh, do we do after that? A peace. Well, we. Uh, well, the fr okay. If we're going to elect a leader. See, well, then we run into the same problems again. Okay, fine. Yeah. So, so, so no government. Yeah. Fine. So the people govern the people and we govern ourselves. and the courts yeah. are. The markets can create courts. This is arbitration. This is like, hey, I've been in the business providing arbitration for ten years. Look at my record. Uh, you look at all my comment feedback reviews. You're like, you know, what's your name? Mark. Mark. Mark provides, uh, you know, great dispute resolution, right? He's not tied up to anyone. Look at his history. It's like when you go to, when you shop at any store, they have the ratings, right? right. Five stars out of five stars. I've been in the business for 20 years, right? It's like, great. That's someone I could trust. I don't trust any of these judges, right? I can't choose who, who you know, these kind of just I'm forced to go to those courts if there's a dispute, right? Mm -hmm. um, I can't choose arbitrarily. I'm forced to pay their salary, you know? So, yeah. how do we achieve that? Well, I think uh, the, the good first step would be uh, letting go of the idea that we need such a thing like a government or politicians. Uh, the time and time again, these things are not working out. Right, right. right. It's proven. Yeah. It's proven Over to not work. Yeah. <laughs> right. Absolutely. The drug war keeps going. People say, you know, everybody knows it's bad, but it still continues to persist. Uh, every single president goes in, increases executive power. Um, you know, and this is like, I guess, a lot of liberals nightmare. Right. Look, look yeah. you know, what do you think is going to happen? As long as, in my opinion, well, what I've learned thus far is that as long as money buys power and your place in society, I think we're going to have that problem. Yeah, and, and those would be interesting uh, problems to kind of work at, but in a way that doesn't require, uh, like, the monopolize of violence the government brings to any problem, right? There's always a threat. There, right. there, there should be, there should be no violence. Find peaceful solutions to these kind of problems, right? <laughs> the only violence there should be is, you know, the tiger uh, in, in Africa killing a gazelle because a, a tiger doesn't know better that's that's the right. only source of food a tiger can have we don't need to kill anything we know better we we know to grow what what the planet gives us and we don't who knows how much longer we have this planet yeah, and granted, it's also a problem under government. They they put out their zoning things, say you can't grow vegetables on your front lawn. Uh, you know, they, they stop like some. They arrest some people trying to feed the homeless in Florida and in California recently. Uh, they own one third of all the federal lands. All the federal federal lands own one third of the land here. That's a lot of land. You know, that could be used for homesteading, for growing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there, there's there's a lot of problems there, and always find the common denominator getting in the way of us trying to achieve something great. It's government. The corporations and. Our government murdered those children in Florida. Mm, corporations a bit of a stretch. They, they left their, the children unprotected. Left them unprotected. <laughs> yeah, they, but they, they, they guard everything. He's got guns. Nightclubs have guns. Uh, banks have guns. Things that people value have guns. But you know, people don't value the children. So obviously, they left them unprotected. There's no guns there, right? They don't even put seatbelts on the school buses when they have to go to school. Yes, seatbelts. Buses. Right, there's, there's no interest in protecting the kids. Seems like kids seems to be like the last minority group of people that uh, that should be advocated for. So, are, is your stance that we need guns in, in school? For My protection? stance is um, maybe public schools are not needed. You know, private schools, uh, community schools. You know, your hippie commune schools. These these sort of things provide their own kind of protection. Because like that kid apparently was maybe bullied a lot. A lot of these tend to be very bullied. And yeah, public schools when you're throwing in kids from strangers who mistreat their own children and throw them in the same kind of test pool, they, you create a Lord of the Flies situation. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, I vote Democrat, but I'm yeah. more of a progressive independent. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I've, I voted, I vote for the lesser of two evils, basically. So evil keeps winning. At some point, that can't really be an excuse anymore, right? Well, evil keeps winning as long as the American people allow it to. If the American people come together and sacrifice um, their capitalist ideals or, or have an awakening that they need to, get down here or get over to their um, local senator's office. How about 
work locally in your own community. Build that up, right? Fair yeah. enough. Fair yeah. enough. I mean, if someone presents here's evil and evil, you know, flip the table over. <laughs> yeah, right. Engage in that. yeah, right. <laughs> teach love, but but and teach kindness first. But you know, the corporate. I mean, I, the corporations have really helped helped out this government. I mean, in my opinion, they're hand in hand. If you look at real estate. Yeah, but, but you can't have corporations without government. Uh, government provides them legal immunity. You know, there's like there's as a person, there's no you know. Um, as a document, there's a guy, for example, who was on a HOV lane, had his corporations paper, trying to, he's trying to argue that, you know, that's a person, because that's what government says. But it allows people to escape liability for their own actions, right? Uh, and that's the same immunity that uh, government enjoys. You can't sue, uh, like, a state prosecutor, right. a judge, Well, it's right? corruption. Yeah. It's corruption. Right. You, you just so you just twist the, the, the letters around, and then you have corporation, corruption. Same right. thing, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the thing is, through this fight, and you know, at the risk of sounding dramatic, it's it is a war. Um, it has to remain peaceful. We, you know, but through these battles, it's been inspiring to to have people, you know, send me a message saying thank you for for you know standing up for humanity. Yeah. Um, and it's been inspiring to watch other people um, out here. Yesterday, there were. Muslim, probably teenagers. They were probably maybe 18, maybe 20, 22, um, holding signs saying, I'm Muslim, ask me anything. You know, that's inspiring to me. The did, you, fact, did you ask some questions? I talked to them for a while. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I don't, you know, a religious. They, they believe uh, women should be equal under law and they reject Sharia law. If. <laughs> They were Muslim men. Yeah. Um, that would be an excellent question for a Muslim woman, I believe. Yeah. Excellent question. Um, do you do this sort of thing in New York too? Well, um, when when uh, 45 goes home yeah. to his tower, nine times out of ten, I make my presence felt. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Well, let's keep in touch. Definitely like to. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what was your name again? Uh, Cal. Cal, Mark. Mark, pleasure, yeah, man. man. Absolutely.